Hello everyone, I am Vikram P. Maduri here and this is uh, part 4 of uh, FICO interview question and answers for the interview preparation and we can also go through this question and answers for a better understanding of the FICO topic. Uh, if at all if you are looking for SAP trainings, you can contact us at info at the jlsoftech.com or jlsoftech at gmail.com. So the questions, uh, I have uh, discussed a couple of questions in the past videos and uh, I'll also discuss a couple of basic definitions as well. I'm not discussing the basic definitions here because you can anyways go through that in the online or in the documentation. Okay, so where do you attach the check payment form? So we need to attach check payment form at the company code level in the payment method. So we need to attach the uh, payment method per company code. So we need to attach the check at the payment method per company code. This is the answer. So where do you attach the check payment? We attach it at the payment method per company code. And what are the payment terms per customer master maintained? So payment terms for customer master can be maintained in two places. One is at the accounting view level and another one is the sales view of the vendor master record. So these are the two, the two places where we can maintain the customer master maintain uh, customer master. We can maintain it at the accounting view level or the sales view level. So we can simply say, simply say, tell the answer like we can maintain the payment terms at the accounting level or at the sales level. So which is the payment term which actually gets defaulted when the transaction is posted for the customer? Is it, is it accounting view or the sales view? So the payment term in the accounting view of the, of the customer master comes into picture if the, if, the, if the transaction originates from the FI module. So for example, if an FI invoice is posted in FB70 to that customer, then the payment terms is defaulted from the accounting view of the customer master. Hello? 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 So the payment term in the sales view of the customer master comes into picture if the transaction originates from the sales SD module. So uh, now if at all if you are posting it from the FI, uh, FI perspective then in, we are doing it from FB70 and then automatically a payment term uh, in the sales view of the customer comes into picture. So now here uh, like a sales order is created in the SD module the payment term are defaulted in the sales order from the sales view of the customer master so that's a difference so we can do it from the fi perspective and from the sales perspective so if i do it from the fi perspective in fb70 then default by default the payment terms will be uh, will be defaulted at the accounting view level and if at all if you do it at the from the sales perspective then it will be at the sales view level so simple i repeat the answer so if at all if you are doing it from the uh, from the finance perspective i mean the uh, the uh, payment terms then it will be generated at the accounting view level but if at all if you are doing it from the sales uh, sales uh, department level then we are we, we automatically it will be originating at the sales view level as simple as that so what are the payment terms for vendor master maintained so yes just now we have discussed about the what are the payment terms for vendor customer master maintained so here it is vendor master maintained so here the payment terms for vendor master can be maintained at the accounting view level or the purchasing view level in for customer it was accounting view level or, or sales view level right so in the vendor for vendor uh, vendor master we, we have it at the accounting view level or at the purchasing view level now which is the payment term which actually gets defaulted in the transaction accounting view or the purchasing view so the payment term in the accounting view of the vendor master comes into picture in the if the transaction originates from the fi module so uh, uh, the same thing uh, like just like sales as well so if at all if we are doing the payment terms from the uh, from the FI perspective, then the payment terms will be originated at the accounting view level. But if an invoice is posted in the FP60 to the vendor, then the payment terms is defaulted from the accounting view level of the vendor master. But the payment term is, is in the purchasing view of the vendor master comes into picture if the transaction originates from the MM module. So simple. So in the sales, it was like FI or SD. Here it is like FI or FI, FI or MM. So if at all, if, you, if the if the document is originating from the MM module, then uh, th then it will be at the 
transaction will be defaulted at the purchasing view level. So a purchasing order is created in the MM module. The payment terms are defaulted in the purchasing order order from the purchasing view view of the vendor master. So it depends whether you are originating the document from the FI FI module or from the MM module. If it is from FI, FI module, then it will be originating at the accounting view level. And if it is from the per, MM MM uh, uh, module, then it will be originating at the purchasing view level. The payment terms. So explain the entire process of invoice verification from the goods received to invoice verification in the SAP with accounting entries. There, there are following steps. Like you know, there are a couple of steps that we have generalized. Uh, let's discuss in a simple way. So a goods received in F a SAP for a purchase material is prepared referring to a purchase order. So only when we have the purchasing order. So when the goods received, basically when we are having a purchase order, purchase order will become a base for the goods received. So unless and until we have a purchase order, we cannot create a goods receipt. As simple as that, right? So when the goods receipt is posted in SAP, the accounting entry passed is inventory account debit that uh, goods receipt invoice receipt account credit uh, a GR or IR which is goods receipt or invoice receipt is a provision account which provides for the liability for the purchase. So the rates for the valuation of the master are picked up material are picked up from the purchase order. When the invoice is booked in the system through logistics invoice verification the entry passed is as follows GR, IR, account debit and vendor credit. Account debit, vendor credit. This we need to remember account debit and vendor credit. So the explanation is explanation is like you know in short form you can tell it like you know whenever there is a, a purchase order created automatically a goods receipt is uh, uh, is generated and when the goods receipt can be generated only on the purchase order which is already created. So when the goods receipt is posted in the SAP the, the accounting entry passed is inventory account debit GR IR account credit a GR IR account. But when it comes to the valuation of the materials are picked up from the purchase order then it will be like GRIR account debit and vendor credit. This is as simple as that. Now, how are the tolerances for invoice verification defined? So the following inst are the instances of tolerances that can be defined for logistics. So we have invoice verification and we have small differences and we have moving average prints price uh, variances, quantity variances and price variances. These are the various places where we have the uh, tolerances. So based on the client requirement, the transaction can be blocked or posted with a warning in the event of tolerances being exceeded. So tolerances are nothing but the differences between the invoice amount and the payment amount or differences between the goods received amount and the invoice amount which is acceptable to the client. So for example, there is a small variation like you know for example, we are expecting the invoice amount to be somewhere around uh, 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 say uh, 1 lakh rupees but it is actually 1 lakh 1000 because of some taxes or something like that or a miscellaneous charges. So we can accept it. So that is called tolerance. So the 1000 rupees difference is the tolerance which we can accept it and we can clear it off uh, with, the, with the acceptance of the client. So can we change the reconciliation account in the vendor master? Basically, we should not do that. But yes, we can do that. Reconciliation can be changed in the vendor master provided that the authority to change the change has been configured. So you, if you have the authorization to change it, yes, yes, you can do that. So following that question, we can we can have another question like if at all if I have changed the reconciliation account, then what would be the replication of that or what would be the re reflection of that on the on the accounts? So if like, like what is the impact of the old balance when the reconciliation account in the vendor is changed. So what happens to the old balance? Does it show to the old reconciliation account or does it show to the re new reconciliation account is the question. So any changes you make to the reconciliation account is prospective and then not re retrospective means what exactly it means is for future accounts, future transactions, the re latest reconciliation account is going to be reflected and it will be shown under that. But for the previous uh, transactions, it will show you the ba old balances on the previous old old uh, reconciliation account entry not on the new reconciliation account so the old items and balances do not reflect the new account only the new transactions reflect the account that's that's very important so now i'm going to discuss from here in the next session and uh, the part four part five of it thanks for watching these videos do subscribe to our channel